Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be taking a look at three defensive midfielders Manchester United should sign. Make sure, of course, to subscribe if you are new and turn the notification bell on and smash the like button. But anyway, let's get this party started. In Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first two full seasons in charge, Manchester United have taken great strides forward, going from a sixth place finish at the end of his caretaker spell to reaching five out of the possible six semi-finals and finishing in the top four in consecutive seasons for the first time since Sir Alex Ferguson retired. Despite that, there are still improvements to be made at Manchester United, so today I'm going to be talking through some options for a major area of improvement defensive midfield. During his permanent spell as Manchester United manager, Solskjaer has almost exclusively used systems that feature a double pivot and a number 10. Bruno Fernandes has made the attacking midfield spot his own and been directly involved in a goal every 95 minutes in a United shirt. He's simply undroppable. Then there's the Paul Pogba conundrum. He can't displace Bruno Fernandes at number 10, and there's question marks about him in defensive midfield, which has seen Solskjaer use him out wide. A true defensive midfielder could A, free up Pogba to play in a double pivot with a permanent safety player, or B, allow Solskjaer to move to a single pivot and gain two creative number eights. The first player we've got to discuss is Mauro Arambari. The Gaddafi man has been heavily linked to move to Old Trafford in recent weeks and would add energy and aggression to United's midfield. Operating in Getafe's combative 4-4-2, Arambari operates more like a box-to-box -box midfielder than a defensive midfielder, although this isn't too dissimilar to United's 4-2-3-1 with Fred and McTominay. The Uruguayan is a well-rounded midfielder, but doesn't have any standout attributes. He works extremely hard and is fairly composed in possession. And he's got a decent range of passing, but is more than happy for longer passes, particularly switching to play. In fact, this season he ranks in the top 15% of La Liga midfielders in terms of switches per 90. But the best part of his game is without the ball. His work rate and energy sees him eat up the space in the centre of the pitch as he presses the ball. In fact, only Getafe teammate Mark Cucurella has made more pressures per 90 in La Liga this season than Arambari. Where he really excels is his anticipation. He reads the game very well, which frequently sees him regain the ball through interceptions. In fact, only Casemiro has made more interceptions amongst midfielders this season than Arambari. The Uruguayan international might not be the kind of signing Manchester United fans want the club to make, but He's the kind of signing that make a lot of sense, with the Manja Matic turning 33 in the summer and playing around only 31% of the Premier League minutes available to him, United only have two defensive midfield options who play in the double pivot week in, week out. Aaron Bari would add another body to play in a destructive role and could give Solskjaer an option to rotate. At just 25 years old, Aaron Bari still has room to grow as a footballer, but with a reported 25 million euro buyout clause, he could be a cheap addition to bolster United's midfield. Next up, Aurelian Chuameni. The 21-year-old has had an outstanding season for Monaco. Like Aaron Bari, Chuameni has largely played in a 4-4-2 for Monaco in more of a box-to-box -box role. But his mentality is largely defensive, as he looks to screen the defence alongside his midfield partner, Fafana. Of the pair, Fafana is the one who tends to drop in as Monaco look to build from the back but Chuameni will drop in from time to time. Standing at around six foot one, Chuameni definitely has the frame to succeed in the Premier League. He's an athletic footballer that gets about the pitch well, often making tackles or blocks by stretching with his long legs. The way that Niko Kovac has set up Monaco means that whilst Chuameni might not be a dedicated defensive midfielder, when the play comes down the opposite flank, he shuttles across to screen the back four, whilst his midfield partner looks to move towards the play. This works both ways, with Chuameni Chuameni shuttling out wide if the play comes down his side. This means the Frenchman is comfortable at defending both central areas of the pitch and wide areas, something that's key for modern day defensive midfielders. The 21 year old is a fantastic ball winner. Not only does he tend to press at the right moments to force a turnover, but when he commits to a challenge, he usually comes out on top. In fact, across Europe's top five leagues this season, Chuameni ranks second for tackles plus interceptions. And not only has he made more pressures than a United player this season, but his pressure success rate is by far the best amongst the midfielders. In possession, Chuameni largely operates in the middle third. He doesn't tend to dwell on the ball. Instead, when he receives it, he looks to see if there's a forward pass on and play it. Whilst if there isn't, he generally looks to quickly recycle and keep the ball moving. As you'd expect from a box-to-box -box role, Chuameni gets forward and influences the play in the final third. Often he operates in a support position, offering self up 
as a passing option, looking to play teammates in with a through ball. But occasionally, he does burst ahead of play and look for the underlap. The youngster is a classic modern day French midfielder. He's exceptionally well rounded, has got the talent to play in every position in midfield. He just needs to pick one. I could definitely see him making a shift to number six, as he's got the defensive awareness and defensive competence to operate just in front of a defence. But being one of the most sought after midfielders in European football, with three years left on his deal, Chouameni won't come cheap. Another defensive midfielder that wouldn't come cheap is Declan Rice. Over on the Statman Dave's Clips channel, we've taken a look at his profile as a player, so go and check that one out. Alternatively, we're going to be taking a look at some Premier League options in the next video on this channel, so that is a reason to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. And the third and final option for today's video is Toon Coop Miners. The Dutchman is arguably the most suited for United's needs. Where the Reds have struggled this season has been in possession. Fred and McTominay had an excellent destructive partnership. They excel in the bigger, more chaotic games. But against low blocks, United need a little bit more quality on the ball. And that's where Coop Miners comes in. Statistically, he profiles like a top level playmaking defensive midfielder. Using the data from Instat, he regains possession a comparable number of times to Hoiberg, Casemiro, and Joshua Kimmich whilst playing more passes per game than most. In fact, his 75 passes per game are as many as Manchester City's Rodri. On top of that, his key passes per game is more than the likes of Goretzka, Fernandinho and Thiago, and as many as Yuri Tielemans. As the stats suggest, Coop Miners would offer a very capable player in possession, but someone who is equally competent without it. When AZ have the ball, Coop Miners tends to drop uh, amongst the centre-backs to create a back three, often as the left centre-half, whilst his midfield partner sits ahead. This is very similar to United's current build-up, so if he was signed, it wouldn't take the Dutchman long to slip in. In possession, Coop Miners dictates the tempo of his side with short passes. The way he dictates is very Bruno Fernandes-esque, with the Dutchman pointing and instructing teammates with long and short passes. Whilst he tends to play a lot of short passes, he's always ready to flick the switch if the progressive passes on. This could either be a simple line-breaking pass to a forward, or a long switch of play, or even a ball down the line. The Dutchman has got fantastic technique and is more than capable of pulling these passes off as we saw against Ajax last season with an assist, where he pinged a 70-yard ball down the line for Idrissi to finish. He influences Alkmaar's attack through ball progression, getting the ball into the final third and allowing the forwards to do the rest. His excellent passing range does see him get assists and play second assist passes, but as a defensive midfielder, that's not his primary job. Although, he could definitely add some creativity to the base. His assist against Vitesse really highlighted what he's about, Coop Miners in possession. He pushes the centre-back wide, who goes down the line to Svensson. The wing-back then plays it to Coop Miners, who switches out to Windal. The wing-back's cross is blocked as Coop Miners recovers, takes one touch and lifts it over the top for Carlson to finish. Without the ball, he's a very intelligent defender that doesn't shy away from challenges. Whilst he can be bypassed with a quick shift in direction, he's a competent and committed tackler who tends to win the ball back once he's made a challenge. In fact, only 1v1 specialist Aaron Wambasaka has won more tackles in the league this season than Coop Miners. The Dutchman will be an excellent addition to Manchester United. His skill set could see him add control and progression to United midfield, whilst maintaining defensive solidity. Whilst his versatility could see United use him in a variety of roles, including centre-back. What's more is he's a genuine threat from set pieces. He attacks the ball well from corners and from free kicks. Coop Miners is also very accurate with that. In fact, no player scored more goals from set pieces in the Eredivisie this season than the Dutchman. The only question mark is if he could step up to the Premier League, but given his talent and mentality and the fact that he's only 23 years old, you'd expect him to be more than capable. He's also a natural leader and was handed the armband at 21 years old, which fits the profile of most of Solskjaer's key signings. But anyway guys, what do you think? Who would you sign for Manchester United in defensive midfield? And make sure you check back for the next video where we dive into the Premier League options. Declan Rice? Wilfred and DD. Which one would you sign? Get in the comments below, of course. Check out the clip channel as well. I've been Sam and Dave. See you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?